Sometimes you bring a kid fishing. It's National Bring a Kid Fishing Weekend. So I'm bringing this kid fishing. He's a big kid for an eight-year-old, you know? Let's check it out over here. When you bring a kid fishing, it's uh, incumbent upon you to teach him a little bit about the world around them. Because these kids are just buried today. They're buried in their phone. They don't know what's going on. All right. See this right here? This plant species, it's growing up that tree right there. You see it? There's two vines, two types of vines growing up that right now. But what's the five leaf guy right there? Virginia creeper. Virginia creeper. It's a kind of ivy. And the other one that we don't even want to talk about is an invasive. We just went by some beautiful milkweed specimens. Milkweed. Really, really good for the wildlife around here. But uh, we're going to do a little brush whacking here. Some people call it bush whacking. I'm calling it brush whacking. There's a path that is rapidly growing in. We're probably going to get now remember, lift your poles or you'll break them. Keep them up in the air. We're going to do a little bushwhacking here, which is a great recipe to get ticks. Pick your feet up when you're walking, right? Pick them up. If, if you drag them through this stuff, you're likely to get poison ivy because you're dragging the feet through, right? If you pick your feet up and set them down, you're not going to be as likely to trip on something. You know what I mean? Yeah. So pick them up. We don't have any stinging nettles. When we do, I'm going to let you walk through them so you feel the wonder of stinging nettles. Right. And you'll know for the rest of your life what stinging nettles are. We do have some wild rose bushes right here. So don't walk through those. Oh, we got poison ivy under our feet here. So we want to see poison ivy right there. I like to show my young people what's going on when they're out brush whacking, as I called it. Oh, oh yeah, like a sawgrass got me. Notice how I just reversed hold on the poles and I'm bringing them through like that. I was going through head first and then I switched them around. A little sawgrass here, guaranteed to wake you up. Oh yeah, oh sawgrass. Feels good against the naked skin of your legs. Okay, so we get to the river and we can see the water clarity. Oh, look at that carp right there. There's a beautiful carp right at the end of my pole here. You can see it. Yep. See him going out? Yeah. There's going to be more. So, for some reason, this is a really good carp hole, but it's really good for a lot. Now, let's check ourselves out for ticks. Notice the uh, sawgrass has got me. Yeah. Did you get hit by the sawgrass? A little bit. I'm going to show Quinlan how to Euro nymph right now. So what I'm doing is I'm going to just show him how to swing it. So I'm going to flip it into the current and just let it float. I'm watching my indicator as it floats. It's just swinging with the current. Oh, and if you feel any bump. Cast it right back up again. If you cast above the current, meaning cast straight across the river, if you cast higher up, your nymphs will sink down faster. Okay? That's the secret. You can expect to get hits as the nymphs are coming back up, too. So you cast it. Okay, I just kept beautiful. The water's beautiful right now. Perfect for wet waiting. We're wet waiting today. So I'm swinging the nymph. And now the nymph will start coming up, and there's where I get my hit. So Quinlan, walk out into the water so it's up to your knees. And I want you to look at the water. The water has lines on it. Okay. The lines are showing you where the current is. Okay. So I got my boy, he's, uh, he's up there, he's working. I want to let him work out his kinks. I want to let him figure it out. It's all about one motion, I told him and then watching the indicator. You can see my indicator moving along and we know we fished this in, in four quarters. So quarter one up top 
it sinks, it's going to get down to the bottom. Now we're in the second quarter until it gets even with me. Now it's going into the third quarter. I'm watching it. It's down deep. Now it's coming up. Right here is where you can get a lot of hits. There we go. So one of the reasons that we're here is you can catch a lot of these, smallmouths. Why don't you come up here? It seems like there's a bunch of these at the head of the pool. Get your other pole and just set your other pole down right here. And this is a feisty little smallmouth, boy. Oh, he's a fatty. Look at the belly on that boy. Kingfisher. Swallow. A lot of bird life here. This river is running a little strong. We had a lot of rain the other day. I mean, it's not crazy, but there's definitely a lot of color in it. My boys, understand? Come on, let the line out. It's caught on the knot. Oh, my boys. I don't know why. I, I, you got to have enough line to be able to reach down and get them. You have a 12-foot pole, and yet you're... So how do I let line out whip it up? You, you're caught on the end. There's a knot that's stuck. It's stuck on. You got to get You should be able to, like, give it a flick, and that thing will come off. Flick it. Bounce it up and down. The line should come out at some point, unless it's caught around the top of the pole. Oh, no. Oh, no. Just turn it. Bring it over here. Just, just, just bring it over here. Just give me the end of the pole. Give me the end of the pole. Put the pole down so I can take care of it. All right. There it is. Okay. I want you to always have the orange out. Okay, now, look at what's going to happen. Lift your pole. Okay, lift your pole. Look at the fish. It comes right to you. You reach out and grab it by the jaw. Wet your hand. You always wet your hand before you touch a fish. What is it? It's a smallmouth bass. What's the matter with you? Reach out and grab the fish by the lip. Now, what are you doing? You're swinging the thing all around. This is why you bring your kid fishing, so you can teach basic principles. Look at this fish. Oh, it's like I don't even I don't even know what to think. So I got a little smallmouth. He's hooked in the bottom jaw. I grab the, the little fly. He's got a nice mouth. He's got no teeth. I reach in there like that. I grab it. And I got him off. Here, touch your fish. Just grab him. Oh, we don't have any teeth, Quanny. Oh! My boy caught a fish. Yeah. All right. Well, you bring a kid fishing, they might catch a fish. My boy's got one. Oh, you had one. Remember, just lift it up. If he's pulling line, let him pull line. It's just weird because I was a lefty. Oh, I just had a whack. There we go. This is going to be a tough one. He's out in the current. I don't know what we're looking at. It could be a smallmouth that hasn't jumped yet, though. So I have a feeling it's probably a brown. Oh, and he got off. Ho, ho, ho. He hit like a bombshell. Boom. There we go. Yes. Little smallmouth just came right out of the water with the streamer. Where you going? So these little smallmouths fight. I mean, this isn't. Tiny, you know, this is quarter pound. Oh, yes. Okay, 
scary when you give your boy a, a streamer on an actual fly rod. Now, he's actually caught a fish here in Memphis, so I'm psyched, I'm psyched for that. But I'm a little worried about my own health as I watch him do what he's doing now. So I'm hitting this run right here. He's right below me. We're in a good area. There we go, Mr. Smallmouth. They're in here, Quinlan. He's digging. Oh yeah. Look at him. He's using a woolly bugger and he got himself a pumpkin seed. This is big stuff. Mr. Smallmouth, send me a dream. The biggest smallmouth that I've ever seen. Mr. Smallmouth, stay away from Quinn. His fly is backwards and you'll hit it again. Mr. Smallmouth. Mr. Smallmouth, send me a dream. Oh, there we go. Yes. <laughs> Mr. Smallmouth, hitting my fly in the fast water. It wasn't a dry. It was a streamer as big as you've seen. Mr. Smallmouth, send me a dream. And another, another, he caught another. It's a red eye, big and mean. Not a smallmouth, but a red eye. Or bream. <laughs> he hit my streamer. Didn't you see? What are we looking at here? Is it a brown? Feels like it. Yeah, it is. It's a brown trout. Yeah. I had a figure that one would be there at some point. No, it's not. It's a smallmouth that had me fooled because he didn't fight so well. But he's a fairly good size one. As it goes. Mr. Smallmouth. Tricking me here. Making me think you're a brown trout I fear. I don't know how I made that mistake. It makes me think that I'm not awake. Mr. Smallmouth. Mr. Smallmouth. Get over here. I'm not going to eat you. I'm going to let you go, I fear. You're a bigger one, so get in the water. Look at that little pig off. Mr. Smallmouth. So Quellen told me it's June 7th, National Big Bring a Kid Fishing Weekend. So Fishing Historic Places has brought a kid. He's a very helpful young man. Him and the Habibis. One of my favorite wildflowers, Joe Pie Weed. It's growing in abundance here. It's going to be beautiful. And then right here, looks like we got some sun chokes. I got to get the boy into another fish. 
right over here. You go over there. See that point? Just walk out that way. It's shallow. And all you're going to do is you're going to cast so that you land in that current. You're going to, you want to land in the current. And then you're letting your thing just kind of sink. And then you give, it a, you give it some jerks. You don't even really have to. You can just let it go. Go out that way. Got one, yes! Why don't you... <laughs> Remember, you're not reeling it to the end. Yeah, good, good. All right, National Bring a Kid Fishing Weekend. He's got himself a small mouth. Grab him by the mouth. Put your thumb in his lip. Oh no. Put your other thumb in his lip. Yes. Yes! I should have got a picture of that smallmouth for you. He's on fire. The kid is on fire. Being a lefty, watching him land fish, it's going gonna, it's gonna to wrap you up and you're going to fall and you're going to drown. The Revenge of the Red Eye. I got me a small mouth. No, I got me a red eye too. These fish are actually called, I always have to think about it because I've been calling them red eye my whole life. But they're called rock bass. Although in Maryland, rock bass are what they call stripers. Because people in Maryland are weird. So it's National Bring a Kid Fishing Day. And I brought this kid right here fishing. He's been helpful. And luckily, I can show him some springtime oysters. These are the yellow ones. We're going to do a little ID on them because I'm not dead certain. And you got to be dead certain about mushrooms if you're going to consume them. Those are pretty good looking specimens right there. And if we lift up, we can see that. Those tight gills, the, the ear-shaped lobe, they're growing here on this elm, which is an indicator. I, I feel like elm are really seriously good wood, or, or, or trees, for a variety of mushrooms, including our friends the morels. But hey, sometimes you don't bring home a trout, but you bring home mushrooms. If you know what you're looking at and you make a good ID. So it was another nice day of fishing out here. And we'll see you next time on Fishing Historic Places. <laughs> I literally just said that. I literally said, that's the gravestone. There's big rocks in front of you. You're going to get one with your knee and then you're going to fall in. And you were like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, things happen. Like I said, it's summertime. Imagine if it was April. <laughs> <laughs>